Good morning, good morning, good morning to our online viewers. We are so happy that you can join us uh, this morning to another Pastor's Corner. I thank you for joining on. We have um, Kellan Charles on, and he's saying good morning, Pastors, and everyone here today from the UK. So we welcome you, Brother Charles, for being here uh, this morning. And we just want to um, thank you, our online viewers, who have been viewing time and time again every Tuesday. We appreciate your online presence. And I just want you, as before we continue, just to call a friend and call a family member and let them know that, hey, Pastor's Corner is on. And today we have a wonderful topic which would be discussed, the Bible questions answered. Bible questions answered. And with me are two lovely and scholarly men of God this morning. Um, I'll allow them to introduce themselves. We'll stop to my 40s, right? All right, good. Uh Good morning to everyone, and um, it's a privilege to be here this morning. My name is Lambert Paul. I'm the pastor of the Western Warren District, which consists of Closure, Loreto, Mount Granby, and Florida. And um, this morning, I'm privileged to be here to share with you in this wonderful discussion. Wonderful. Good morning. I'm Frankie Noel, the pastor of the Eastern District One, comprising of Paradise, Mount Horn, Telescope, and Moya uh, congregation. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. And they forgot to mention that they are scholars with us this <laughs> morning. <laughs> uh, before we continue, why don't we bow our heads as we invite God's presence. Almighty God and eternal Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity, Lord, where we can discuss uh, Bible questions, oh Lord, questions that need answers, oh Lord, from your word. We pray, Lord, that you just breathe us this morning. Continue to guide our minds. I pray, Lord, that you be with our online viewers. So as they participate, Lord, in this morning's um, proceedings, in this morning's question and answer, Lord, that they will be tremendously blessed as well. So thank you for your leading and thank you for your divine presence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So yes, just to reiterate, our topic this morning is Bible questions answered. Bible questions answered. Um, the first question, pastors. And um, what will be the evidence of those born of the Spirit? What will be the evidence of those professed born of the Spirit? And they say, please comment on Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And it reads, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So, pastors, what will be the evidence of someone who is born of the Spirit? Pastor Paul. Well, um, basically, um, to be born of the Spirit, it's uh, generally it's a work that the Spirit of God does on the inside of an individual. Um, however, you will not be able to see the work that is done. Um, but when the work is done, as it continues, you will see the result of the work. True. Um, for example, in the year 2004, when Hurricane Ivan came to Grenada, 
um, you are not able to see the breeze that are blowing, but you are able to see the result of the breeze blowing and um, the buildings that was destroyed, the vegetation that was flattened and things like that. And that's what the Bible says in John chapter 3, is that the, the spirit is compared to the wind. Yes. Right. So when, when that, the, the spirit takes effect on an individual, um, the life that they live will be in accordance to the spirit. What does that mean? You see, the Bible says in, in the book of Peter that, the men of God, they wrote the word while it was moved by the Spirit. True. So yes. it means, therefore, that whatever we do should be in accordance with the word of God, um, which the Spirit of God inspired men to write. So you cannot do something and claim that you feel it's right. No, the word of God must validate it. Whether it, whether it is validated by a command or a principle from the word of God, the word of God, which is led or which was written by the Spirit of God, should be guiding. And additionally, that's what the Bible says in First, um, first Corinthians 10, 31. It says, whatever you eat, whatever you drink, and whatever you do, you should do all to the glory of God. Because the word of God, once it is followed, it brings honor and the glory to God. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Pastor Amen. Noel. Amen. Well, to add with what uh, Pastor Paul said, evidence of those born of the Spirit uh, will produce the fruits of the Spirit. And um, not only that, uh, the, there is the, the inner man with the power that Christ can dwell within. Mm -hmm. So Christ is, is dwelling within. And when you are in the Spirit, you are going to do the things of the Spirit. The Spirit is going to enlighten you guide you into all truths. Um, the Spirit would help to justify you and, and also um, would help you in terms of guiding you and uh, teaching you. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is, is, is a great teacher True. and so on and lead us into all truths and so on. And um, the Holy Spirit would help us to speak and proclaim God's truth and to live in accordance with God's will. Amen, amen. amen. Wonderful, amen. wonderful, wonderful. And these are the evidence that someone is being born of the spirit thank you so much pastor noel and pastor paul um second question pastor it's a good question <laughs> i know you're going to answer it it says what are the evidence that one has been born of god what are the evidence that one has been born of god and here to to give a little insight you have two texts here from First John chapter 2, verse 29, and chapter 4, verse 7. So it's First John chapter 2, verse 29 says, If you know uh, that he is righteous, mm -hmm. you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. I'll read that over. First John 2, 29 says, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practice righteousness is born of him mm -hmm. and chapter 4 verse 7 says beloved let us love one another mm -hmm. uh, for love is of God and everyone who love is born of God and knows God so the question is what are the evidence based on the text I, the two texts I just read what are the evidence that one is born of God Anyone well, well based, based on the text, there are two important words, righteousness and love. Yes. And uh, both righteousness and love originate with God. True. God, God is the originator of this, both, um, these two words. Um, let me put it this way. The good in us is not about us. True. But it's about the God in us. Amen. And uh, if we cease to invite and include God in us, then there is no good in us. True. So the good in us is the God in us. Amen. And if we separate ourselves from the God in us, then there is no good in us. So uh, our righteousness, the Bible says, is, is as filthy rags, mm -hmm. and there is none good. True. But um, Jesus justifies us, and he makes us good, and he's willing to forgive us, and so on. And once we we live in accordance with his will, then Jesus Christ is going to, um, to help us to, to remain righteous once we remain in connection and in obedience to his will. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Pastor Paul? That's interesting, right? Yes. Um, 
to be born of God, um, sometimes we claim righteousness. But when you are, when you are born of God, then mm -hmm. um, your life becomes different. To True. be born of God, there is some step that you have to take. Um, you acknowledge your, your sins, so you confess, you repent, and also the final step, you go through a stage of conversion. Mm -hmm. um, conversion is one of the critical evidence because when you are converted, then the things you used to do, mm -hmm. you do them no more. The True. place you used to go, you go there no more. The things that you used to drink, you drink them no more. In other words, things that were contrary to God, they will start changing. It will be, it will be evident before people that you are that you that you accepted the righteousness of Christ that you are no longer messed up as you were True. but Christ has cleansed you that's what the Bible says in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 therefore if any man be in Christ he's a new creature all things are passed away behold all things have become new additionally another point um, another text that, that, that was highlighted is that love for one another yes um, there are a lot of persons who are, who are hurt by another individual, whether in church or outside of church, and they have come to the conclusion that I can't love that person anymore. Yeah. I can't forgive that person. But if we really come in contact with God and we, really are, we, we are really born of Him, it doesn't matter how bad the pain is or how serious the offense may have been, with the power of God in us, mm -hmm. we'll be able to restore to, to forgive and to move on because um, we can talk love you know True, yeah. love even in, in fact today um, I love you has become like a cliche, cliche yeah. you know everybody mm -hmm. just use it and it seems as though it has lost its, its significance um, but once we really experience God love and we are really converted and we are born of him then our entire deportment um, yeah. I believe it ties in with the first question additionally yeah. Because our general deportment, our love, or our, 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 our um, attitude towards people, our deportment, we're going to have hatred and we won't be um, out of control. We'll have self control yes. and all those different things. Because I'm not saying additionally that everybody who's born of God will just automatically be perfect. No, it's a growing process. True, yes. Right? So there might be areas you might be faltering in still, uh, making mistakes and um, coming short. But what you, for example, say you accept Christ and you used to smoke cigarettes, so you used to smoke like two packs a day, and after you accepted Christ, by the space of a week you stop smoke, you're smoking one pack, but you're still smoking, mm -hmm. and then the next two weeks go and you start to smoke half a pack. So then by the time at the end of the month, you stop smoke, yeah. right? It wasn't a one-off. Some people there are things that they stop one-off. Yeah. And praise God for that. That's what God expects of us. But there are things that people still struggle with. Even the Apostle Paul struggled when he was born of God. All right? So once we are born of God, people should see a transformation in our life. Amen. Amen. Uh, so just, yes. Just to add, uh, Pastor. Go ahead, Pastor. Okay. We are born physically. We are all born physically. Physical mm -hmm. birth. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people, all of us, we get baptized and so on. But uh, there's more to it. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sure. Uh, when we are baptized, the Holy Spirit, we go into a deeper level of our love and, and our experience. So people who hurt us, we still love them True. and we're still praying for them. We, we are not um, um, on the same level with them because we have met Jesus and the Spirit of God lives and reigns in us. And that brings the transformation, you know. So. Amen, amen. Thank you, pastors. You all are doing a wonderful one. We can see that for the evidence that someone is born of God, um, as Pastor Paul and Pastor Noel has wonderfully expounded, would be shown in the person's behavior and or their attitude and even their lifestyle, how they live their life from day to day. And that's why it's important that as followers of Jesus, even our online viewers, we need to um, exhibit those characteristics and the attitude that would demonstrate that we have been born from God and not just um, pretend, but mm -hmm. actually living the life that God has asked us to live. And we have here this morning, um, Atia Johnson says, we have to pray to God to give us heart or his heart, I believe she want to say. Um, also, we have Stedin Isaac say, good morning, pastors. We have Rolf Ferguson says, um, 
he, he placed a text there, Second Corinthians five seventeen. I think it's if any man be in Christ, yeah. he's a new creature. Thank you so much. Um, all things behold, all things are passed away. All things become new. We have Rob Ferguson says pleasant Tuesday to all. Um, MB says good morning, Pastor. So we thank all online viewers for joining us this morning, and you can share your points, share your thoughts as we continue to discuss Bible question answered. Um, what are the essential principles of the law of God according to Romans 13.10? What are the essential principles of the law of God according to Romans 13.10? And I'll read it. Uh, verse 13, chapter 13 rather. Uh, verse 10 says, Love does not harm. Love does no harm rather to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love does no harm to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Pastor. Okay, let, let me start with um, this text in, in 1 John 2, 4. It said, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandment, is a liar. Mm -hmm. And we should add a big liar too. Um, love the commandments the first four is based on love towards God our relationship to our maker mm -hmm. and the, this, the last six of them is our relationship with our neighbors um, so we have the vertical mm -hmm. and, and we horizontal. have the, the horizontal yeah. but we must first get the horizontal correct and that would help us to get the, 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 vertical, the vertical correct, yeah. and that would help us with the with the um, horizontal. The, the horizontal. Mm -hmm. So I um I, I put it this way: if we look at the word sin, S is for the savior, and the N is for the neighbor. So love to the savior and love to the neighbor, and if I in the middle, if I lift myself above the savior and above the neighbors i am more or less involved in a sinful life true yes but if i exalt the savior and in a saving relationship with him that would help me to help my neighbors be in a saving relationship with god amen 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 thank you wonderful pastor paul you want to comment or yo that's interesting you know um because we talk a good love talk, mm -hmm. you know, as I just made mention of that, the cliche and so on. And um, something that is very contradicting, even according to, according to James chapter 3, um, he spoke about um, the tongue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, with the same tongue, you bless God. And the same tongue, you cuss man. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that not ought to be. True. Um, yeah. There was a time I was reading a, a poem, and um, it was about a lady, Miss, I think her name was Ida. And um, they were saying about Miss Ida that she can give you a good belly laugh, and she know how to get her to pick me to listen. And uh, men that like to pursue too. You know, she was able to use words to get them to stay away. And, and, and the, 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 the poet said that she had no problem to Cuss man in one tongue and praise God in the other. Yeah. For how it was normal. And there are times, even as individuals, we, we are comfortable and confident that we can have a good relationship with God mm -hmm. and we can treat our fellow men anyhow. Because I don't care about people. Once me and God good birth. <laughs> if you're on God good, you will try to mend as much relationship as possible. Because you will want to demonstrate the, the love that you are experiencing from God. In True. fact, the Bible says, Blessed are the peacemakers, so they shall be called the children of God. So you cannot be somebody who like confusion and as in local term, bacchanal, yeah. and claim that you are a child of God. In fact, um, there were two brothers, they were in conflict, and they had a boundary there, and um, the boundary passed over the river. And one of the brothers, they were so upset with, the other, with, the, with his brother that he, he, he hired he hired a, a contractor and he told the construction man, he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to build a wall for me so I wouldn't even have to see over my brother. <laughs> and he gave him all the material and he went to work. And when he came back, 
So it's amazement the man build a bridge. <laughs> okay. Right? And, and it's interesting, you know, as Christians, somehow we claim that we experience the love of God and we and God good and everything. And you might know of persons or even us as individuals might have disagreement and confrontation with another person. And instead of we to try to build bridges, we build walls. Right? Because we want to feel comfortable. And then we'll sing, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Or we'll sing 4, 422, we are marching to Zion. Yeah. Pastors, we are not marching anywhere. Because if you cannot live good with each other here, and you're trying your best, or you did not even try your best or attempt, but you just say, okay, well, you in your corner, in my corner. When we reach in heaven, we got a real problem. <laughs> so we wouldn't really get there. Really get there yeah. Right? So the love that we experience of, from God, we should be able to share it with others. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful pastors. Let me just add, um, loving somebody does not necessarily mean that we are going to encourage them in wrong. True, yes, you're right. Um, we love people, but there are certain things that we don't like, mm -hmm. or maybe certain behaviors and things that are contrary to God. So if I love you and, and you are doing things that will destroy you, and in the end, jeopardize your soul salvation I must tell you and I must tell you in love true yeah because I love you yeah if, if I don't tell you and I, I allow you to be your your own destruction then I I don't really don't love you mm -hmm. so when I love humanity uh, despite of the situation whether I like it or not once it's contrary to God's will I must let you know and try to direct you on the right path Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, pastors. Thank you so much. It says, what two commandments sum up the law of God according to Matthew 22, 37 to 40? It says, what two commandments sums up the law of God according to Matthew 22, 37 <coughs> to 40? And it reads, Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great command. And verse 29, verse 39 says, And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It says, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So, Pastor Frankie, you want to go? Well, I think I answered that question already. In, um, the first four mm -hmm. has to do with love to God. Um, and the last six has to do with love to our, our, our fellow men. And, and Jesus put it so nicely we were trying to find out which one of the commandments is the greatest and um, in essence what Jesus was saying all of them are very important Put because all of them contrib contribute to the theme of love amen. for God and love to your fellow men amen amen wonderful and I'll go to the next question to Pastor Paul so running on time is running on us or running out on this morning he says uh, can one know God and refuse to keep his commandments can one say that they know God and refuse to keep his commandment? And the text here I want you to comment on, Pastor, is 1 John 2, verse 4. 1 John 2, verse 4, and it says, He who say, says, I know him and does not keep his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Pastor Paul? All right, so that's, that's interesting. Um, first thing, um, I want to establish... According to James chapter 2 and um, verse 10, it says, um, He that said, I, I, I keep, if you keep one law, sorry, and offend in one point, you're guilty of all. Yeah. So, in other words, the Ten Commandments is as a chain, right? It's as a chain. So, you cannot keep nine and break one. In other words, if we are creating a chain to help somebody up a rock or something like that, and one of us, got tired, and we released the chain bus. <laughs> yes. It doesn't matter how strong the other guys are. Yeah. If one person re re release or the hands slip off, then the chain bus. Yeah. Right? Um, so the commandments is not part of the commandments. It's the Ten Commandments. It's, 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 you see, the commandments is a, is a, is a unit. It's yeah, one. That's true. Yeah. Right? There are different parts. They, are, they have the first four for God and the last six for man. Um, you love to God and you love to man. But um, it's Ten Commandments. Once you break one, the Bible says you're guilty of all. Yeah. 
And if some by chance somebody wasn't sure, the Bible says in verse 11, for he that say do not kill, also it says do not commit adultery. If you, yet you do not kill, but if you commit adultery, you become a, a transgressor of the whole law. And in verse 12, he says, for a man shall be judged by the law of liberty. So the Ten Commandments will judge man. Right? So it, it's interesting to understand this point first, to know that if you claim to be a follower of God, then you must keep his commandments. Amen. Because the Bible says in, in, in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, and she shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, so he shall save his people from their sins. So once you accept Jesus, he saves us from our sins, not in our sins, right? And then, and then as you look further, you might say, Pastor, well, where are you going with this? The Bible says in 1 John 3 and verse 4, he said that um, sin is the transgression of the law. Yeah. Right? So once you break the Ten Commandments, or you continue to break the Ten Commandments, in other words, you are living in sin. True, true, true. So if you accept Jesus Christ from commandment number one to commandment number ten, we should try by the grace of God to keep it. Amen. We might fall short. But if you continually live in contrary to it, then you're really not saving. You're lost. And some people are even lost in church. True, true. That's so, true. So the answer to the question is no. Yes. Yes, thank you so much. I think the pastors are doing a wonderful, a wonderful job this morning um, in our theme, in our answers to the questions from the Bible to this, this afternoon, rather. I pray by the grace of God that our online viewers that you are enjoying this morning um, discussion and that you are being enlightened as we continue to learn and grow in Christ. At this time, we now have a break and we now have a special music in song. That the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt. Who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart? Not because of who I am. But because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind, still you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. I am yours. I am yours. Who am I that the eyes that see my sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again? Who am I that the voice that calm the sea would call out to the rain and calm the storm in me? Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, yet today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind, still you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. I am yours. because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, yet today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind, still you. Hear me when I'm calling, Lord, you catch me when I'm falling, and you told me who I am. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear?
Wonderful, wonderful. We thank you all and viewers for joining us again this, this afternoon. I pray, Lord, I pray that you are having a wonderful um, experience as we continue to discuss a Bible question answer. We thank you for that wonderful special music. And I pray that you have been blessed from that music. And I just want to thank you for being with us this morning. And continue to like and share the page and let others know. Call your neighbor and let them know that, hey, Pastor's Corner is on as we discuss Bible questions answered. At this time, we're going to another um, segment of question and answer. Um, Pastor Frankie, I'm, I'm asking you that question because I think um, you are capable of answering it. Um, it can be a hard question, but I think it's a good question for us this morning. Question number six. It says, how does God view willful sin how does god view willful sin and we have here kindly share your thoughts on hebrews chapter 10 verses 26 to 29 um hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 it says for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth there is no longer remain a sacrifice for sin, uh, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose? Or will he be thought worthy of his trample of the Son of God underfoot, content the blood of covenant of the covenant rather by which he was uh, sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. So I'll just read out the text I think is in focus. It was 26. It says, For if we uh, sin willfully after we have received a knowledge or the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remain sacrifice for sin and the question is how does god how does god view willful sin pastor frank pastor noel okay just in support of the text i would just like to use two others mm -hmm. um james four seventeen. he says therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not it is sin true yes and then in luke 12 verse 47 he says and that servant which knew his lord will and prepare not himself neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes yes. I, I was looking at a pulpit commentary a very creditable source mm -hmm. by a lot of noted scholars and they were commenting on that a passage and they were saying that um, it, it speaks to apostasy mm -hmm. blatant open apostasy Okay. Knowing what you need to do, I'm doing it not. it's just like, okay, you are a Seventh-day Adventist who keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason, you go to a Sunday church that is not keeping the Sabbath. Uh, and you, you, you're saying that you are in the Lord, but you are not keeping all of God's commandment. And you feel settled there. But I just want to elaborate what, what it says. It says, uh, the sin spoken of is that of a man who had received the knowledge of the truth, who had rejected the gospel after having received the knowledge of the truth. He had trodden underfoot the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He had trodden the divine mediator as if he was a male factor. True, sure, yeah. So your, your relationship with God it's like God is just like a man. Yeah, common, and you treat yeah. God any common way, any old how. And you feel what God says is just like a man says it, mm -hmm. so I don't have to do it. Yeah. So, so that's, that's the, the, the backdrop of, of what the text is saying. Amen, amen. Wonderful. Thank you, Pastor Noel. And, and it says, how does God view the willful sin? Um, although God is a loving God and God is a faithful God, as Pastor Frankie was alluding to earlier, um, if we are willfully sinning, you are actually dishonoring God. Yeah. And we, as, as God's people, we should not dishonor God in any way mm -hmm. at all. And as he said earlier, um, we should not view God as just God as a, as a man or a human being. Yeah. That we should take him, for, take him for granted. We have to understand that God is God and he needs to be reverent. Yeah. 
Um, thank you, Pastor, Pastor Noel, for that. Pastor, Pastor Lambert Paul, I have a next hard question for you. It's a good question, you know. I, I, I know you are capable of, of giving a good response. But I'll ask you, says, why will many persons or many individuals not be ready for the coming of Christ? Why will, why will many persons will not be will not be ready for the coming of Christ? And I have here, please comment on this text, Matthew 24, verses 48 to 51. Matthew 24, and I'll read in our hearing, verses 48 to 51. It says, but if the evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and began to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkard. The master of that servant will come on a day when he will not be looking for him, and at an hour that he is not aware of, and will cut him in two, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the question in consideration is, why will many persons not be ready for Jesus Christ's second coming? Well, that's interesting, right? Um, first of all, I will say that um, whether Christ comes or not, whether he's coming or not, the best life to live is always a Christian life. Amen. Amen. You see, when you do that, when you live a Christian life, and I want to start there because I want to set a platform. When you enjoy living a Christian life, you realize you save more money, you have better health, um, better moral standing and all those different things. True, yes. Then you are, you, are, you are better, you are more respected and you have a greater influence and a greater positive influence on society. True. Uh, you will spend less money by the doctor and you will be better off financially, um, health-wise and all those different things. But there are a lot of people today that don't like the Christian life. Right? So they, they want to be saved but they want to come in when they finish do all what God says you shouldn't do. <laughs> so, sometimes people want to give their life to Jesus, they consider carnival, they consider having sex and not get married, they consider the, the Romana cruise, as someone recently, there was somebody that advertised, I think, um, skin and deep or something like that. Um, so you consider that, you consider different alcohol and how, how, how nice they taste in, and it's like, if I join church and I start to follow God, I can't enjoy those things. Well, basically, if you reflect on it, it's really not enjoyment. They are robbing your health, they are robbing you financially, and your body just being deteriorated, right? Mm -hmm. So with that type of attitude, mentality, people want to live on the edge. True, yeah. So the last minute, they could just rush in. If you look yeah. at the scenario that you just read, um, they know that the master is coming back. Yeah. But they want to enjoy what the master did not approve and hoping that when the master is about to come, they will come back and get back on board. Yeah. But what has happened sometimes, the enjoyment and tangling, because I've discovered, and I've said that many times about sin. You see, sin keeps you longer than you intend to stay, and it costs you more than you intend to pay. True, yeah. And um, as a result of that, there are a lot of people who are entangled. So you cannot wait on the last minute, because the thing about it with the last minute, the Bible says in James chapter 4 and verse 14, that what is your life? It's like a vapor. You appear for a while and then it vanishes away. Because you see, think about it. Three of us can be here. Um, I might be younger. Pastor Noel might be old, uh, the eldest one here. And he lived longer than both of us. True, yeah. Because we thought to ourselves, he old man, he would die before. <laughs> but the green lime, who are the younger ones, die or they fall and leave the ripe one on the tree. <laughs> right? So... Hoping that you'll get time in your old age is a risk. So because of the pleasures of this world, because people don't want to live for Jesus, they just want the benefit. And I tell people, Christ would not take us like that. Who refuse to live a Christian life and bring us to heaven? Because you'll be awkward. Yeah. You get up in the morning, and first thing you say, pass a drink of rivers there. I'm like, seriously? No, Jesus said, you know, there is no rivers up here, you know. <laughs> you know, say, well, pass a stag. We say, we don't have no stag up here. You know, Jesus, well, you're only talking about let's go and do this and that. When we're we having a cruise, you know, because, so it will be awkward. It's just like, for example, like when I went to, when I went to Colombia. 
when I just arrived there, it was a little difficult because I couldn't speak the language good. So, yeah, certain places when I go, I had to pull up my phone and somebody according to what was said, I can't really identify. Right? So, so it's really important to know, um, to prepare for where you want to go. Yeah. You cannot just, cannot just expect to just be taken and just carry it. That's why you have different levels of education. Yeah. So you can't take a three-year-old and put them to do common entrance. You can't take a secondary school, um, not secondary, but a primary school student who haven't gone to secondary school to understand physics and maths and all those things in the complex um, sense and put them in university. True, yeah. And it's the same thing today. So God expects us to try our best by his grace to live a Christian life and not try to live on the edge and wait for the last minute because it's dangerous. True, sure, wonderful, wonderful. And that is important for us, um, all and viewers, and for every one of us. Um, uh, some of us will not be ready for Christ's second coming because we will, we'll, in other words, as Pastor Noel or Pastor Paul was stating earlier, that we will be so caught up in the things of this world and, and think that we can we can just jump in last minute. No, we have we are living in such a world that is uncertain that we don't know what would happen. Whether we will die today or die tomorrow, we can go and sleep, we can be strong and healthy now and mm -hmm. next five minutes you hear the individual die. So it's important for us to be ready now, asking God into your heart, asking him for forgiveness and, and recommitting your life to Jesus through baptism and allowing God to be the one who governs your entire being, not following the things on the affairs of this world, but following what the word of God prescribed, as Pastor Paul alluded earlier. Pastor Frankie, I have a next question for you. you know, time is running out on us this evening, but I believe it's a wonderful one that we, we can all comment on. It says, do you believe the pronouncement in Second Peter Chapter 3, verse 10, is literal or figurative? Hmm. Do you believe the pronouncement in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10, is literal or figurative? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10, and I'll read it in our hearing. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. What's that, Noel? Okay, the, the author here is um, using some very strong language <laughs> yes. to, to let us know the intensity of the punishment of sin. And um, the first part, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief. I yeah. believe that. Um, based on the trend of what we have been discussing here, um, there are lots of people who are in church, but they know they're not living right, so they don't want God to come right away. Um, but Jesus will come when we are least expecting him. Sure, yeah. And when we study the, what is happening in the world today, uh, people are so much into the world that the, the church has become the world too. So we, instead of the, the church changing the world, the world turned around and changed the church. And so we are bringing things from the world in the church and we are adapting it. So worldliness is in the church. So I believe that. Um, like one, one author says that the earth, the first earth began with a garden, but there were trees and plants and so on, and the earth made new, we'd also have that. Mm -hmm, yeah. All right. So, um, so I believe that the language that is used here is a language to help us to understand the intensity and the seriousness of living outside of Christ mm -hmm. and the punishment that would, because the Bible tells us that God said he would not destroy the earth again by water. By water he would yeah. destroy it by fire. Yes. And God's fire is not like man's fire. God's <laughs> fire is going, to, is going to destroy all the things that has to do with sin and whoever um, commit sin and, and it's not repented of, God is going to destroy that. Yes, yes, wonderful. Um, so are you, so you're telling us first that it is literal yeah, it and is. not figurative. And it says that that day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night mm -hmm. in which the heaven will pass away with a great noise mm -hmm. and the element will melt with fervent heat. So, Pastor? I just, I want to add a little thing. Go um, ahead, Pastor Paul. Is that the part where it speaks about um, as a thief in the night, 
Um, the thief in the night part is not literal as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it means therefore you he will come unexpectedly. Unexpectedly, yeah. yes. Right? So um, this does not mean that he come in like a secret rapture. Mm -hmm. When he comes, the Bible says in in um, Revelation 1 7 and even in First Thessalonians 4, um, 16 and 17, and in Psalms 50, when he comes, he, when he comes, it's real noise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> So, but if you're not ready, it will be surprising for you. So yes. that's why that's what it means you come as a thief in the night. Everything else is literal as it as it's stated. Yes, wonderful. Thank you, Pastor Paul, for that. Um, the the pastors are are, are doing an, ex, an excellent job here this afternoon, Pastor Paul, Pastor Pastor Noel. Uh, we thank you for being on this morning, and we have our final question here. Okay. Um, uh, similar to the declaration in Isaiah. Uh, 65 verses uh, 21 to 25. Um, will they, sorry, I'll just take over that. Similarly, are the declaration in Isaiah 65 uh, verses 21 to 25 real? And I'll just read that for us. So they're asking us the declaration that is stated in Isaiah 65 verses uh, 21 to 25. They're asking, is it real? He says, and I'll read, verse 21 to 25, it says, uh, They shall build houses mm -hmm. and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Uh, they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. Uh, or for as the days of a tree, uh, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect, this is what he's saying, my elect, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Uh, they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. Uh, for they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord, and the offspring with them. It shall come to pass uh, that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the dust shall be the serpent's food. Uh, they shall not hurt nor destroy in any of my holy mountain, says the Lord. Is it real, pastors? Is that declaration real? Pastor Paul, Pastor Noel, and then. Right, so, um, so, so to explain that, um, it causes a little... A little detail, but um, mm -hmm. I will see how quickly I can make that. Um, when Christ comes the second time, he'll take us to heaven, those who are righteous. Mm -hmm. uh, according to um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, 16 and 17. Those who, are those who are wicked, according to um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10, um, they will be destroyed the brightness of his coming. Yeah. So that's the wicked living. And both the righteous living and the righteous dead. The righteous dead will be resurrected according to First Thessalonians 4.16 and they'll be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Yeah. So it means therefore that those who are wicked and they died before and then those who died when it comes the second time, they'll all remain dead mm -hmm. for a while. According yeah. to Revelation chapter 20, um, they will rest there for a thousand years. Thousand so we'll be on a thousand years vacation. And after the thousand years, the Bible says that Satan will be loose. Right, from his prison. His yeah. prison means a pr prison of circumstances. You don't have anybody to deceive because everybody is dead or the rest has gone to heaven. Yeah. Um, when, he, when he comes back, according to Malachi chapter 4, then fire will come. Well, not Malachi alone, but Malachi described the fire. Yeah. But same Revelation 20 speaks of fire will come down from heaven out of God and it will destroy the earth. But also in the destruction, it will have purification. Yeah. Right? It will have purification. And then after that, the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5, in the Beatitude, that the mix shall inherit the earth. So we'll be coming back here to live forever. And what has stated there in Isaiah is literal. Yeah. We will plant, and nobody will come and break open a place, no pretty alastini and all those different things. Um, the animals, because cre at creation, when God created everything, there was no lion ripping, no, no, no llama pattern, manatee, no, there was no... Fierce animals. Sure. All the animals were tame. All the animals were quite welcoming. So this would happen again as literal as stated in the Word of God. Thank you. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Pastor Noel, you have any comment? Well, to add to what was said here, uh, when he talks about building houses, talking about a place of prominence. Sure. Yes. And, and, and also, um, in, in the earth menu, um, there will be no idleness. 
True. You know, we all will be engaged in planting and, and doing different things and so on. Um, so there will be no idleness there. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. And, and the safety, the safety, uh, we don't have to worry about, um, as, as was said by Pastor Paul. Wonderful, wonderful. So, pastors, um, Pastor Paul can have his mango tree. Mm -hmm. Not just um, any mango tree, but a Julie mango. And <laughs> Pastor Francis would not come and steal this mango. Uh, Pastor Frankie may have his yam bed well blooming there. And Pastor Francis would not come and say, Pastor Frankie, yam, and you get up in the morning and you wonder, well, I plant my yam and I've been taking care of it for months. And somebody come and dig it. No. So, brothers, brothers and sisters, in all in all, God have a plan for our lives. I thank Pastor Lambert Paul for being with us this morning, Pastor Frankie Noah for being with us, and for the wonderful, for the way that you have answered the various questions as it relates to what we might um, want to be answered and so forth. So I thank you, Pastor, for being with us. And the encouragement that we want to leave with you this morning is that God can save you. The question is, are you willing to be saved by God? Um, God has something prepared for you. The question is, do you want what has been, what has been prepared? You have to answer those questions. And if you, if you answer in the affirmative, then you have to understand that we need to keep the law of God, be faithful to God, live God day by day, so that when Jesus comes the second time, we all would be ready for him. So on this note, I just want to thank all online viewers who uh, joined us this morning. We thank you for your comments. We thank you for, for, for just bracing us with your presence online. And I pray by the grace of God that you had a wonderful ex experience here and that you, we, have, we all have learned and gained something this morning, this evening rather. So at this time, I just ask my, my colleague, um, Pastor Noel, to just pray for us to close at this time. Okay, our Father and our God, we give you praise and thanks for the preparation you are making for your children that you love. You have gone to prepare a place for us. And as the Apostle Paul said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither have it entered into our brain what you have gone to prepare for us. And dear God, help us to get ready for the greatest event that will occur in the history of mankind. And that is the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have given us enough, enough uh, time, and you have given us your word. You have given us so much people that are excited about your word and uh, people who live in accordance with your will. We have the perfect example of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to live in accordance with your will. So when you come, even though we should lay down the treasures of this life, you, you're going to resurrect your, your children to be with you and we want to be with you, dear God. We pray that those who are listening, that you would help all of us to make the necessary preparation to be with you when you come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Noel. Do have a thank you, all and viewers. Do have a wonderful, wonderful day and the rest of the week.